The Rainbow Theater presents The Real Ghostbusters Cold Cash and Hot Water When you hear this Turn the page Let's begin now The Ghostbusters were busy coiling up trap wires and tidying up their headquarters after a particularly difficult ghostbusting mission. The phone rang. Janine answered it. Dr. Vankman, it's your father. Dad, where are you? I'm in Alaska. Still selling ice makers to the Eskimos? No, I got a new racket. I mean, uh, I got news. What kind of con is it this time? Son, I've found something up here buried in the ice. I can't tell you about it over the phone, but can you come up here today? To Alaska? Are you out of your mind? What did you find? Just ask your college buddy Egon if he's ever heard of Hob and Agaric. Peter's dad hung up, and Egon looked curiously at Peter. Well, what did your dad have to say? Ob and Agaric. Ray and Egon looked at each other as if a cold chill had just gone down their backs. Peter, there may be something to this. Ordinarily, I wouldn't trust your father, but... Yeah, well, con man or not, that's still my dad up there. If he's in some kind of trouble, I'm gonna help him. Come on, guys, what do you say? We can catch an afternoon flight, dispense of this Hob character, and be back here by morning. Eh, hey, Egon? If it really is Hob and Agaric, we may not come back at all. Peter could be very persuasive. And soon the Ghostbusters found themselves skimming over the Alaskan ice in a tiny bush plane. You okay, Ray? <sighs> I hate small planes. Relax. We'll be on the ground in a few minutes. Hey, Egon, tell us about this Hob character. The Inuit peoples believe that the gods placed a great demon, Hob Anagaric, to rule over the world. When the humans came, they sealed him in a block of ice and sank him to the sea bottom. With a fire demon gone, the snow started and the north became cold. The Ice Age. Essentially, yes. Winston looked skeptical. Where'd they get the block of ice if the land was hot, Egon? Magic, of course. Soon, four dog sleds were racing over the snowfields. Suddenly, the group found themselves in an avalanche. In an instant, Pops and Peter were buried in a seething white mass. Winston went for his proton gun. They're running out of air down there. Remember, for snow use, use a low frequency with a wide dispersion, Winston. Winston fired, and the rainbow-colored beam lanced through the air. Clouds of steam drifted up as the snow converted to water vapor and exposed the buried sled. It's working, Egon. Well, the theory is sound. Peter and his dad crawled out of the vaporizing snow. Peter wasn't pleased, but his father ignored him. Come on! It's not much further, and I want to prove to you guys that this is important. Eventually, they arrived at the Laganuki General Store. They were greeted by a group of Eskimos in their shirt sleeves, staring at large patches of dirt that had melted through the snow. The Ghostbusters walked around to the rear of the store to be confronted by a large black monolith encased in a block of ice. Egon took a reading on his PKE meter. 
I think it's jammed. Ow! A curl of smoke drifted from the machine and Egon dropped it. As he watched, it began to melt. Peter looked serious. Bad, huh, Egon? Bad, Peter. This thing rates at least a Class 7. I don't know if we can destroy it. At that moment, Pops Bankman arrived. I don't want it destroyed. I want you to trap it. I'm going to take it back to the lower 45 and put it on exhibit. No, uh uh-uh, Dad. Impossible. Forget it. Not a chance. Later at lunch, the Ghostbusters had a hushed conversation. Dad's going to try to sneak that thing back to the States. I know it. We can't let him, Ray. Absolutely. The PKE readings went right off the scale. Winston looked cheerful. Don't worry, man. We'll think of something. He'll never sneak that thing past the four of us. Peter began making a tower out of silverware to keep himself amused. Suddenly the table jolted and the tower crashed down. Okay, who's the wise guy? You, Winston? Not me. Egon consulted his PKE meter. Registering strong plasmoetheric activity. Suddenly, a glass of water sloshed all over him, and objects began to rise off of the table. The Ghostbusters dive for cover underneath. Hub and Agaric? What do you think? Okay, that does it. First thing in the morning, we fry it. Next morning, the Ghostbusters, with all their equipment, came out and headed towards the monolith. All the locals joined in a procession and followed at a safe distance. Pops Venkman was standing in front of the monolith when the party arrived. Please don't do this, boys! We have to, Dad. That thing is too dangerous. We've got to neutronize it. Believe me, it's for the best. Egon looked around to make sure the crowd were well back. Ready, Peter? Let's do it. Visors? Ready? Full stream? Fire! Beams of light lanced out, zapping the black monolith. Ray pushed back his visor and blinked. Hey, that wasn't so hard. So much for magic ice. Winston smiled. Let's get back to the city. Pops Venkman hid his face behind his hand and smiled. He was standing in front of a pile of empty black paint cans. That afternoon, the Ghostbusters boarded their plane, unaware that Hobb and Agaric was still on the loose. Pops Venkman had pulled off a very clever switch. I guess you boys know what's best. Sir, if Hobb and Agaric had ever got loose, he could have reduced whole cities to charcoal. Thanks, guys. Peter, you'll take care of yourself. I will if you will, Dad. I'll be fine. Don't miss your plane. As the Ghostbusters plane flew off, an old DC-3 on skis glided up to the tiny terminal. Pops Venkman, holding a flight bag, grinned as a large canvas-covered object was loaded on board. Back in New York, the Ghostbusters were soon at work sorting out more ghostly goings-on. This time, there were problems at a beauty shop. Suddenly, there was a big explosion, and Ray stuck his head out of the shop, peppered with hairpins. He looked even more surprised than usual. Just then, Janine arrived, carrying a newspaper. Have you seen this, boys? Winston looked at the newspaper. Dr. Venkman to unveil mysterious find. It's your father, Peter. Hob Garrick. He did it! He's going to unveil it in Madison Square Garden, Ray. He conned us. Peter read on. What? You'll like the next bit, Ray. The creature will be kept in a special containment designed by the eminent spiritualist Dr. Bassingame. Bassingame? 
The phony psychic who almost destroyed my aunt's place? I'll pulverize him. Janine tried to calm him down. You've got 45 minutes before he unveils it. I've got a cab waiting. Come on. Peter and Egon rushed towards the car. We'll go ahead and try to stop him. Load up and follow us as soon as you can. When the music stops, turn your cassette over. Madison Square Garden was almost full, and the monolith was standing on a podium on stage. As the house lights went down, Bassingame and Pops Venkman walked into the spotlight. Good evening! On a recent expedition to Alaska, I discovered this block of blank ice. It contains an ancient spirit. In a moment, my colleague, Dr. Bassingame, We'll release it using an ancient book of spells. The audience began to look a little uncomfortable as Pops Venkman went on. There's no cause for alarm. Dr. Bassingame has erected a fence that'll keep the spirit, called Hob and Garrick, confined and docile. It's over to you, Dr. Bassingame. Dr. Bassingame began reading a lengthy spell from an old book. As he did so, the top of the monolith boiled off into the air, revealing a shimmering being curled up in a tight ball. Pops Venkman still thought that Dr. Bassingame was in control as he went on. There it is, the eighth wonder of the world, and now totally controlled by man. The demon uncoiled itself and went over to the fence, getting bigger and bigger all the time. Uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, the fence will hold him. But it didn't, and the terrified audience scrambled from the rear exit, flattening Egon and Peter as they tried to get in. Suddenly, there was an earth-shattering roar. Something tells me we're too late, Peter. What gave you that idea? Janine was waiting outside with a cab driver when the screaming crowd began thundering towards them. The cab driver looked very worried. So uh, what do you want me to do? Can you call in an airstrike? Just then, Pops Venkman dived into the back of the cab. Where to, sir? Australia! Anywhere! The Ghostbusters stumbled out of the fleeing crowds. Peter and Ray had hold of Dr. Bassingame. Ray turned to Peter. What do we do now? Run away. The Ghostbusters raced to the comparative safety of a nearby wall, dragging Peter's father out of the cab as they did so. You conned me! Me! Your own son! It's Bassingame's fault! He said that fence of his would work. Uh, you two can argue later, but right now, Hobbs heading for Central Park. We gotta stop that thing. Hobb was standing in the park, steam coming from the ground around him. He lumbered on and grabbed a tree which burst into flames. Ghostbusters pushed their way through the crowds. Peter shouted. What's the plan, Egon? Full stream, maximum drain. Four proton rifles pointed at Hob. Let's put this puppy on ice. Fire! The ion beam struck the monster, washing him in pure energy. thrashed about, roared, and disappeared. Did we do it? I don't think so. Look! 
Ob reappeared and romped off towards the battery, leaving a trail of burning asphalt behind him. We'll have to bind him first. The Ghostbusters rushed back to the firehouse area, and Ray connected all four proton cannons to a recharging grid. Egon began poring over a handful of books. Suddenly he jumped up. I found something on Anna Garrick. He wasn't just a demon, he was a recruiter. He was in the process of building an army to lay waste the world. All he needs are ghosts. Ray looked devastated. The containment unit! All those ghosts we've captured! Boy, are we in trouble! And now the good news, Egon. I found a binding ritual, but it's going to be tricky. The Ghostbusters stood in Hobbs' path, armed, taunting him. Come on, you big turkey! You're ugly! Hobb advanced on the group. Now! Read, Bassing Game, or would you rather talk it over with him? Atugzul, Alexul, Gidimxul. Suddenly, Hobb charged forwards. Faster, Bassing Game! Faster! Babarara, anti Huldadala! Hobb froze into an immense statue. Egon screamed. He's bound! Now! Fire! As the beams hit him, Hobb became an immense glowing form, then dissipated into the air. The Ghostbusters breathed a sigh of relief. Hobb and Agaric was history at last. The Ghostbusters' final job was to take care of Pops Venkman. Peter took charge. You have a good trip, Dad. Hey, thank you for paying my fine, son. I'll pay you back as soon as I sell the movie rights. No way. No movie rights. No more trouble. I don't want to hear anything from you except for quiet postcards. Pops walked towards the bus waved and watched as the Ghostbusters walked away. Seeing his chance, he nipped onto the bus behind. Hey, is this bus going to Hollywood? Non-stop all the way. Feel good. Ghostbusters! I'm afraid of no 